Hello and welcome back to the Panther Support Channel. My name is Amrith Maldonado and this is lesson two of our Panther for Beginners playlist. We will be spending a lot of time in the Panther editor, understanding Panther libraries, learning how to update screens, JPL and reports. Let's get back into our Panther editor. This is my uh, blank screen my library table of contents and my properties window. This is how you would typically want your desktop or your UI to be set up. And to access these windows, you can go up to view, library table of contents, uh, properties windows. And to create a blank screen, you would do file, new, screen. Use the screen wizard, you could say no to it. Okay, so this is how you would set up your environment. In order to create widgets or fields on the screen, you could go up to the Create menu and create a label, text fields, push buttons, check boxes, list boxes, and so on. Or you could also use a sidebar here. Just click and drop it. Click and drop a dynamic label. Click and drop a push, uh, a checkbox, sorry. In order to apply properties to it, you would select the particular field and go to the properties window to apply a property like a name. Test one, right? Give a label, I'll replace label with test two. There you go. And so on. To test the screen out or to actually go into something called test mode, you would press the F2 button on your keyboard or this green traffic light that's going to test mode. And escape, escape will bring you back into edit mode or the options, editor, or shift five key. All right, so that's how you would add fields to your screen. Now, what about logic, right? If you're actually writing JPL, which is our proprietary language that stands for JIX procedural language, you would click on your screen, go to the focus property, expand it, it'll be minimized, expand it, go to JPL procedures, and this is where you would start writing your JPL. Proc A. Very C-like syntax, but way simpler than C, proc B. So you could either have your JPL within the Panther screen or external to Panther. If you're using the lat latter case, then you would definitely need to use the keywords include or public. So if you have got a login.jpl file, you could either use include or public. And all include, the difference between include and public is with include, the JPL module will stay within within memory for the life of the screen. So as long as the screen is open within the application, the JPL module stays within your memory. If you like the JPL module to stay within the life of the application, then you would use the public keyword. And if you like to unload your JPL file from memory, you will use the unload keyword. All right, so what about updating your Panther screens, your existing Panther screens, so your JPL reports? Now, in this scenario here, we have a, a simple screen. We'll need to save the screen. Panther 5 and later, all your screens must be saved within a Panther library if you are needing to edit it within the Panther editor. So first thing I'll do is create a new Panther library, File New, Library. I'm going to call this library Test. Now I'm going to save it in my working directory. All right, test, test.lib, and I'm going to save the screen, test screen, in my Panther library. All right, so notice I have one member in my library. So in your library, you could save screens, reports, frame sets, menus, JPLs, images, um, and, and so on. Now, what about opening an existing Panther library that contains artifacts or components of a real application? All right, so I'm going to open up a real Panther application here. I have my application installed on C program files ES Pro, and it has several libraries. So I'm going to navigate to the contents of the library using Panther. And under my library table of contents, I'm going to click on the open button and navigate to my program files. In fact, let me just copy the path here. There we go. Paste it here. All right, I'm going to open up dciis1.lib and it contains .frm components, .bin components, all these um, screens and JPL files and images. This is actually a JPL file, .bin. 
um, the dot frms are screens now this is a naming convention that's chosen by our developers of the application so you could name your screens and jpls with whatever extension you want so i can um, set my filter here to screens these are all the screens in my application um, my reports no reports here i have some menus yep i have a few menus here and some jpl files all right let me open up a jpl file let's try this one here all right, so you could open this within Notepad, WordPad, whatever um, you choose to use here. In my case, I am I'm choosing to use Notepad, and this is a configuration setting that I, I choose to do in my SMVARS file. All right, so this is all my JPL. I've got procedures in here. All right, let's open up a screen. So let me choose, set my type to screen, and I will open up a screen. That's a Panther screen. Another one here, another one here, and I could edit it. Click on my screen, change, look at, looks like the, the, some screens have JPL behind the screen, and some screens have JPL external to Panther. Or in, this, in this case, I've got JPL, all my JPL within the screen. All right, let's look for library. So let me open up another library. Um, let me try admin report, right? So I've got some screens here. Uh, let me look for reports. There you go. I have reports here with a save with a .jrw extension. This is a Panther report, right? You, you have JPL behind the Panther report right here. A connection, um, an SQL statement. In order to view the logic of your report, you'll go up to view report structure. And this is your report structure, which basically is the, the code. Think of it, the logic behind the, the Panther report. All right. In our following lessons, we will talk about, you know, Panther report structures and creating Panther reports. This is all for lesson two. Thank you for watching our video. And if you like the video, do press like or subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions regarding the lessons, please email us at support at prolifics.com. Thank you.